Somebody had to do it. I'm just saying. Somebody had to do it. The box met. It's the box met. It's the box met. See this? Pose. 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 Drawing when you do this is not that hard. In all seriousness, by this point, you've probably heard about the box method. Now, the box method is a form of construction used to simplify objects, and then you draw a box in perspective and you fill everything else in with the dimensions of the object that you're using. In this case, we're gonna be doing like the human body. Um, but the fact of the matter is that if you're like me and you have issues like applying concepts or issues with creativity, you might not be able to understand the box method at first. So I want to talk a little bit in depth about it and also see if there are a couple things that we could do to make using the box method a little bit easier and a little bit more intuitive for any artist that's really out there. So as a quick overview of the box method, essentially what you do is you take whatever structure that you're using and you put it in a cube or box shape. So looking at this torso here, we might follow along the top the collarbones, come down along the side, and then just bring this plane upwards. Remember that we're looking towards it, so it is going to decrease in length. Or this line and this line are going to get closer just because of perspective. And then just fill in the rest of the box right here. We aren't trying to be exact, of course, either. We're just trying to get an idea out there. And for a pose like this, this is relatively easy because you can see all the planes. You can see where the rib cage ends, you can see where the hips end. And so being able to replicate this box shape on this image is relatively simple. And see what we can do with this now is we can just fill in our spine area. And I can actually take this layer Move it over and start filling in different details. So like, if we look right here, our rib cage is going to come down into here, into the stomach. You could stylize this a little bit. Drop down, a leg comes out from down at this corner. And then we have our other thigh going up in towards the hip. The back side of the hip comes in front of the back. Draw that down, come over here. You can start to fill in the breasts as they go alongside this top line. Then you come back into here with the shoulder, draw the arm up, and then you fill in the rest of your forms. And so you can see how beneficial this is to use this method because you're able to get the basic dimension, idea, shape, and like your specific landmarks, like your collarbones are right here, um, the bottom of your rib cage is going to be right here, the upper side of your hips are going to be right here, and then you can follow the flow of like the center line for your stomach. You can map out everything like that but you aren't restricted entirely, so you could still stylize this. The issue I had, and why I didn't like the box method that much at first, is because you couldn't really see the planes um, of more complicated poses like this, or poses with like twisting torsos that are also foreshortened so that um, the torso comes towards you. You don't really see about half of the planes that you need, and so it's a little bit harder to map out where you're actually going to be drawing things. The truth is that they still exist, of course, 
but it does challenge the brain a lot in a way where you're kind of second guessing yourself and you think that the method might not be the best for you. So like right here, I can see where the rib cage would follow, but not necessarily where the hips would be. Like, would I come from down here or would I want to intersect into this box and come down here? For some, the answer will be obvious, and for others, it might not be. So for me personally, I would intersect into this box, come down here, and then just make sure that this entire area is extremely foreshortened because I can already tell by the distance of the leg and just the pose itself that I'm not actually going to be seeing a lot of this waist from this angle. So come over here, and then we would follow the same procedure of just filling in all the basic shapes. Now with a lot of practice, you'll be able to understand and apply the planes properly, but if this is still a new concept to you, it might still be difficult. And I want to think of a different way to actually fix that idea and get the brain just used to looking at planes in general instead of applying planes to the human form. And then once you get used to looking at those planes, it might be a little bit easier for you to apply like the planes and the boxes to the human body because you know where all your landmarks are already. You're used to it. Now, here I'm gonna show you what I mean. Um, this is a character sheet I made and I kind of already got a little excited and drew over it. But, as we know, you can map out the planes for your box. And we see this here, right here, right here, right here. And then we see it from a side profile as well. And like I said, I did get a little bit excited while drawing, and I kind of already went over this. There are some considerations that you have to make when using the box method. So, like, when you see the hip right here, it is not going to be a trapezoid. You are going to use a box because you do have to compensate for the muscle and the fat tissue back here. Um, so you are going to try and keep this shape consistent. But when you look at the pelvis from the front, um, you are going to have the hips coming down into the hip bones right here. And so this can follow this trapezoid shape. You don't have to worry about it. Um, the side profile is a little bit different. so. Let's not worry about this. But the thing is, when using the box method, if you do have specific preferences, like for me, it is going to be a little more bottom heavy characters, um, you can follow a bottom heavy shape and use that in your proportions of drawing. But what is cool about this is you're able to mark out your landmarks. So this is going to be alongside the top of the collarbone, for me, the bottom of the sternum, the top of the hips, and the bottom of the groin. And then what you can do is you can actually print these shapes out and cut them out into a little box model. And I'm going to do that in a sec and show you a couple examples of how you can use that model. But it is going to get you used to drawing with planes and recognizing certain landmarks, etc. For a little bit of clarity and for the curious, when I am drawing my boxes, I'm going to follow the upper and bottom line of the rib cage and the upper and bottom line of the um, pelvis. So if I start like this, and I'm going to be using a female character by the way, if I start like this and I have my spine, then my rib cage is going to do something like this. And then the spine is going to come down into the pelvis area. And it's going to do something like this. Then you have your hip joints that come out. Your shoulder joints, but we aren't really worried about anything other than the rib cage and the pelvis. And so what I would do is I would come over here and then just 
start drawing the boxes from those planes. And for a little more specification, as you get better at anatomy, you are going to notice some things about the body that you will just use as landmarks and will be helpful. So like coming right here, if this is where the bottom part of the sternum or like the center of the rib cage is gonna be, then coming across, that's a good landmark for like your pectoralis major or your pec muscles. And if you're drawing a female character, that would mean that your pec muscles um, or your breasts, depending on how large or small they are, they are going to follow the pec muscle lines. So see, I was drawing a character with like medium sized breasts. It would probably come around, well, a little bit below that line. The breasts would probably come around a little bit below that line. All right, now I wanna show you what I'm doing. So, I have my shapes cut out, and this is foam core that I got from the dollar store. I just taped it together just to make your basic shape. I'm doing this, I'm doing the waist, and then the last thing that we have to do is make a spine. Now the spine can be made from any materials. Um, if you want to be using cardstock, I tried using that before. It is a little iffy. Um, I have a secondary model right here. It's kind of floppy, but you can get it to hold in certain positions. Um, what I'm gonna be trying this time is, this is a stem from a flower, like a decorative flower that they had at the dollar store. And basically I cut it up and then I'm gonna tape it together like this. This way I just have the mobility, the ability to twist and just allow it to hold its shape um, and this one, because it's so thin, it's not very difficult um, to move, but at the same time, it's not fragile enough for it to break, like compared to like a paper clip or something. So yeah. So here's the final result. This is exactly what you'd be seeing when you're drawing. Um, this is not foolproof, and you will also realize this when you're just practicing with the cube shapes in general trying to draw. Um, there are some constrictions. Namely, when you twist your torso, there's going to be muscle, fat, tissue, tendons in here that are going to bring these planes alongside each other and bring it in smoothly. Um, you are not going to have an adjacent area directly next to an adjacent area, you know? This is going to be curving inward, and I can show you what I mean in an example when I'm drawing later. Um, and also, doing this, your back can flex way more than that. So these are all considerations that you have to make when you're using this. Um, but the whole idea behind this is just to get like your brain and your eyes used to using these cubes. So there are going to be, you don't have any restriction on the back, arching backwards. Um, for awkward poses like this, if we did have a little twist in the torso, you are still able to get used to the way those planes look. And including if you're supposed to be like looking from the back or upward, maybe in this position, you are allowing your brain to understand the way the planes would commonly look. And also you can mark these. You can mark these with the center line of your sternum, with the center line of your waist, with the um, center line of, not the center line, but the outline of where the pelvis follows. And these are all gonna be good indicators of where you're gonna be drawing and when you're using this model. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple pictures of these in a couple different poses and show you exactly what I mean. Like I said, I do like my characters to be a little bit more bottom heavy, have a larger pelvis, hence the trapezoid shape. And it really depends on your preferences. Um, you are going to need to know just a little bit about anatomy and placement of forms, but the shape is here to help you with that. So like if we see these corners, these are gonna represent the edges of the pelvic bone. These corners are gonna represent where the hip bone is, more like this plane right here. This corner is going to represent the bottom of the rib cage, or the bottom of the sternum right here. And then if we can even pull back our model just to look back for reference, our belly button is going to be right alongside the center line of this edge following the um, pelvic bone edge. 
and then this corner is going to represent where the collarbone is sternum is going to be right here so the shoulder is going to be somewhere around here um meaning that in between here there's going to be a little dip for the hips you know the hip dip this is going to come down here for the stomach and then raise a little bit for where the pelvis area is and where the rib cage is it's going to be pushed out right here because the hip bone is going to push out this direction so we have this curvature here and then we're going to come in here we're going to state that our belly button is right here and then since our hips are going to go right here our groin is going to follow upwards this direction meaning that we can probably just come connect a leg right here come over here we have our secondary hip dip coming down through there and we're probably gonna have fat coming not fat um, we're just gonna have the form flowing in upwards so this is gonna follow the line of the hip and then the rest of the body is going to come out from behind here just going to follow the back section our breasts are going to probably do something like this notice how I'm saying probably right you aren't trying to be perfect with this you're just trying to get your ideas out and I can always talk more about different subjects that aren't really touched on more in the future like for me I'm still learning how to draw breasts so this is a little interesting for me myself um, bring the breast line out maybe right there then we are going to have our rib cage come right here and then we'll just make some lines to represent that this line might just be a little bit too aggressive so follow that upwards towards there and then we have our shoulder coming out deltoid going in towards the breast and then maybe like our head does something like that so it does look a little silly I can't make adjustments like this breast could be larger so too can the head and we can redraw this line and even with the perspective the form does still look a little bit silly so what I might do is take this go over to my transform tool free transform and just make it a bit more narrow now where this method is really going to help it's going to be with our more complex forms so say we're imagining this area as the back meaning that our spine would probably come down here and we can see it twists inwards towards the viewer as such um, if we're looking at it like this is our buttocks then we are going to have a plane right here that follows this and then we can begin to just draw the hind end in following this box shape like such use the same idea right here maybe go out a little bit higher a little bit wider and for these twisted forms you are going to have to make the consideration once again that you are going to have muscle tissue tendons that are going to be twisting and falling into the curvature of this form and you want to make that consideration when you're drawing or else you might begin to get confused so right here you have to consider this is going to be an area of tension it's going to be pulling on it so you aren't going to have this overlap where you might right here because this is where most of the twisting uh, twisting is happening 
this is going to be separating and then this is going to be pulling in this area it's just something to consider that way you aren't getting confused and you're understanding how to draw you know more complex forms with like a twisting torso better um i do not like the way i'm drawing this butt right now well whatever we're just going to use it for an example because the main focus of this area is not surprisingly not our hind end right <laughs> so we're going to come over here come back over here follow the shape of the torso like i said this is going to come up. We are going to have an overlap where the hip meets the stomach, but not where our stomach is going to come into the rib cage. So remember that tension, pulling, tension, pulling, tension, pulling. You have a separation point where it's being pulled and it's not going to, you're not gonna notice that separation point when there's tension. It's similar to cloth and we can talk about cloth in another video maybe. But coming up here, we are going to follow this basic shape for the back of the shoulder. And then the shoulder may droop. I'm just being very basic with this pose. I don't want to overcomplicate it just to, just for the sake of convenience. I don't want to confuse myself as much as I don't want to confuse you guys. So is going to come up. And the breast may look a little bit wonky. Like I said, I'm not the best at drawing breasts yet. So that's the thing too, is even as a beginner artist, even as an amateur artist, you're always learning. So don't get discouraged when you're at a point where you feel like you're plateauing because every artist has done it. The hardest part is just getting over that hurdle and it's all about learning, so. Do not restrict yourself. But I might have the head wrap around, do something like this. And I like to draw my little plane, my little dot for the eye. And then to represent the spine a little bit more, I'm going to draw that bump in the neck. Move the spine upwards, draw just a little bit of a shoulder blade, and then realize that this dip right here looks a little bit weird, meaning that my shoulder blade is probably just a little bit out of place. And also I want to flare that outwards. As you can tell, I'm going off the dome and off of experience. It is a little bit hard to describe. I'm just playing with things right now. But like I said, the whole idea of this exercise is to train your brain to get used to using those planes um, for more complex poses where you can't necessarily find a reference or you don't understand how the reference itself is working. You may see this if like the character or the model is wearing a lot of clothes. It's actually hard to get a good sense of where those planes are because you aren't seeing the pelvis, you aren't seeing the groin, you aren't seeing the bottom of the ribcage. And it really, it really is good in a way because it challenges you, but at the same time, if you're just developing this skill, then it is very difficult to adhere to. But this is a basic idea because you do want to make considerations for the twisting of the pose and you want to make considerations for the areas that are more than foreshortened where it becomes kind of difficult to understand how the pose is working. Um, for me, having this model is very helpful because I'm able to see all the planes at all times. And I'm also able to recognize when um, a certain landmark, like for example, the bottom of the crotch, if the character has their arch back or their back, if the character is like this and they have their back arched upwards and here's my box. If I'm looking at it from say like right here, everything down here below this point is going to disappear. And in my mind, it's like, okay, well, how am I going to draw the rest? Like if I want the legs to come outward, where are the legs gonna come from, etc. Those are considerations that you need to make when you're drawing. 
and without being able to see the planes, it does become kind of difficult. That's exactly what this method is for. That's the best way I can put it. Just going on into some more examples. I have another twisted form. This one is a little more extreme than all the other ones that we've looked at, just because we do have this foreshortening right here, but that's not gonna make it difficult at all because I can even see, like, I marked these planes right here. So, I already know that the groin is going to come up right here into the pelvis, if my Clip Studio will load. Come up over here, since it's going to be twisting, this line is actually gonna come along this way. So, meaning that my belly button is probably gonna be somewhere right there. And then following this idea of tension, my rib cage is going to end down here. And my thigh is going to come out here. I want to draw a pose or get an idea for a pose of a character laying on the side of their leg with the torso twisting upward. So that's exactly what we're doing right now. And this is one of the more difficult poses it was for me to understand because you have the um, cubes overlapping. And so now not only are you missing some of these planes, you're also wondering like how, where exactly am I going to overlap this? You know, um, are these going to align properly to the point where I'm able to draw the form well? And so that's something to consider. Right, so coming over here. Yeah, this pose is definitely a little bit more difficult to draw. Going over here, this is going to come up right here, right here. I might even take this line and bring it inwards just a little bit. That way. And I'm not gonna go too crazy with my breasts or anything because I am lazy right now. So we're just gonna do it like this. All right, so we have this. And a little tip, um, something I also feel is very important is your ability to draw collarbones and how you map them out. And something I've noticed is in art in general, you can like play connect the dots with virtually anything that you're doing. And the same applies to collarbones. So if my collarbone is going to be up here, that's going to be right there but I do want to push my shoulder up. So say my shoulder is going to be right here because she's gonna be west, uh, westing, <laughs> resting all of her weight on this one arm, meaning that the shoulder is gonna be pushed up right here. Now, all I have to do is fill in the space in between. Right there, come over here. Oh, the shoulder might be a little large, that's okay. Let us push it inwards. Come in right here. And I'm not going to draw a fancy hand or anything. And I don't know what I want to do with this arm, so you know what? She don't... Uh, maybe I should give her an arm. I don't know. Um, let's not focus on that too much. This breast is going to come up right from here, there, and let's just say that this arm, no, I'm too lazy to draw the arm, okay, okay. So there's that, we have our neck muscles, which I do want to talk about shoulders a little bit more in the future, so I might get into that in depth with neck muscles and everything else. And then you have your head structure with a little two dots for the eyes. Now 
Now there are considerations that you can make for this model. Something I'm definitely noticing is that my model is just a little bit too wide for me. And every time I'm redoing it, I'm having to go through and narrow it just because my rib cage could have been taller or it could have been narrower, either which one. But the form still comes out nicely. It gives a lot of definition and the appearance looks very structured. And that's what we're aiming for. Alrighty, so I did do a lot of talking during this video. I do apologize. Um, I hope I kept it interesting for you guys and I hoped you learned a lot. For me, the box method, it didn't really make sense to me that much when I first started using it. But as I started implementing it further and further into my art, it really did have a huge impact on the way I see things and the way I construct my forms and different shapes within virtually anything I'm drawing. Um, with that being said, I hope you guys learned a lot and I hope you can take a lot from this. Um, if you make your models, let me know. Um, let me know how it goes for you. And maybe there are some other things that we could do to like modify maybe like a better spine or something along those lines. Um, I know you can use something like Blender or a 3D model, uh, a garage kit to do all this, but I really want to simplify the form into just looking at those boxes, which is why I made those models. Um, with that being said, if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. I would really appreciate it. I want to continue to do more videos like this. That way I'm learning as an artist, but I'm also able to teach you guys and learn from you guys as well. Um, I think these discussions that like I'm having in the comment section of my last video, they're very healthy, uh, healthy to learn from. And I'm glad to like to have cultivated a really small community so far. Um, hope for more fun in the future. Hope you guys keep on learning about art and hope we can all grow together because I'd really be excited to do that. So thank you.